The United States men's national team played its first match in the 2024 Copa America and they got the job done in a comfortable yet underwhelming 2-0 win against the almighty Bolivia. Could it have been better? Yes, it could have. Was it terrible? No, of course not. So what did we learn? Hi, if you're new here, I'm Filippo and welcome to Tactical Manager TV, and welcome to the seven things we learned series where every single day following a US men's national team match, we tell you seven things that we learned. And you can let me know in the comment section, what did you learn from United States to Bolivia zero? And you know what's good about this episode? I don't have much, if not anything, to really complain about Burhalter. And I'll say this, it's been a while been quite some time since I had a seven things we learned episode where I don't have to complain about Burhalter in like five out of the seven lessons which I guess it's good with that said don't forget to drop a like in this video let's try to break 1500 likes if we can on this seven things we learned episode and thank you everyone that has joined our patreon if you want to join our patreon the link is in the description of this video and this specific video is brought to you by underdog fantasy but more on that later because we got to play the intro and go to lesson number one Lesson number one is that Streaky Pulisic is currently in good form. And we've seen that and we've known that throughout the past few years that Pulisic's a very streaky player. He goes through stretches of like five to six games where he just completely balls out. He's man at the match performances, plays very well, has tremendous games. But then he goes through like five to six game stretches where he's just ass, just terrible. There's nothing really in between, just really good or really bad. And this season with Milan, it was quite evident, right? Pulisic had amazing stretches, getting goals and assists for multiple consecutive games, and then he would go multiple consecutive games, not doing much at all. And right now, right now, Christian Pulisic seems to be in good form. He was really good and he scored against Brazil, and then he was really good and he scored and got an assist against Bolivia. The only thing I hope is that this hot form that he's at right now drags on for the entire competition, and who knows? Who knows? Fingers crossed. Maybe he can drag us to a semifinals run or final, maybe. Probably not, but regardless, Christian Pulisic is in good form and that's good news for the U.S. men's national team. He currently has 30 goals for the United States right now in his entire career, obviously, which means he is, what, 27 goals away from catching up to Lendon Donovan and Clint Dempsey as the all-time goal scorers for the U.S. men's national team. Lesson number two is that Christian Pulisic, so we're going to continue to talk about Pulisic, he was brilliant against Bolivia. Fantastic. Man of the match, in my opinion. However, holy crap. He has to stop taking set pieces. It was abysmal. And I know he scored against Brazil with that set piece that I think it was just poor goalkeeping from Allison. But Pulisic's deliveries have been bad for quite some time. His direct free kicks are usually not good. He needs to stop taking set pieces. Please, let Gio Reyna take it for a few games. Let's see how he does. Usually the deliveries, the crosses, and the long shots are better from Gio Reyna. Just get Pulisic away from set pieces. But we know that's not going to happen, especially after he scored that goal against Brazil. Regardless, that's another lesson. I mean, I feel like I've had this lesson before. Lesson number three is that this specific U.S. men's national team performance did not really change the way I see this team. Though, what I mean by that, essentially what I'm trying to say is we beat Bolivia as I fully expected. If you watch the match preview, I said the game would be 2-0. So it kind of went the way I expected it to go. But watching the way we played, I am still overly concerned about our matches against Uruguay, Colombia, and or Brazil. Understand that we had a lot of bad giveaways against Bolivia. They just didn't have the quality to punish us. But against a better team, like we were against Colombia, they will score many 
goals. We will get punished by these bad giveaways and these mistakes that we made throughout the match. Bolivia, Bolivia just sucks, man. man. And, and I, I hate to say it, it. I don't, I don't like disrespecting like opponents, opponent, but, but this Bolivian side is not good. They're in a 11 game losing streak in the Copa America. Seriously, in the past three editions, when you add this one, 11 game losing streak. Also, in the past 30 games that they have played in the Copa America, the last nine editions, they have won one game. They're not good, and the current generation that they have is even worse than the previous ones, unless they play at home. And I know many of you are gonna say, we were wasteful, we missed a lot of chances. We did, in the final 20 minutes. Before that, I would argue that we didn't actually create that many goal scoring opportunities. And it was more towards the end when Bolivia sort of quit. I know they're bad, but they did kind of quit in the last like 20, 15 minutes. And Ricardo Pepe, him specifically, was very wasteful. He probably could have had a goal or two. Individual talent got us the win. A brilliant moment from Christian Pulisic and a brilliant moment from Balogun. But I'm just still not convinced that we can pull a big upset. I hope I'm wrong. I hope our national team grows into the tournament. But I just want to make that clear that despite the, the comfortable win, I haven't changed the way I see this U.S. men's national team currently. Okay, now before we continue, please drop a like in the video if you haven't already. And a quick word from our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. The link to play is in the description. And I will be posting my picks on X and Instagram so you can follow us there if you want to. And we'll be back in one minute for lesson number four. Underdog Fantasy is a fun game to play prior to any soccer match or basketball, football as well. You know, it just adds an extra excitement to the game. And this summer, I will be playing Underdog Fantasy during the Copa America and Euros. You can download the app by using the link in the description of this video and use the promo code TMTV. Yes, please, don't forget to use the code. And let me tell you why. Sign up with the code TMTV to claim your special pick plus a first time deposit offer up to $250 in bonus cash. The game I mainly play is called Pick'em. I just click on it, scroll to the soccer section and pick a player for the specific match and select the stats that I believe will be lower or higher. It's very easy to play, but be smart about it because it's not that easy to win. I'll also be playing some underdog fantasy during some match live streams during the Copa America and Olympics, posting my picks on X and Instagram, so you must stay tuned for that as well. And once again, I'm a professional hater, so usually I pick anything that will have me rooting for the downfall of that player. With that said, once again, thank you Underdog Fantasy for sponsoring the channel. The link to play is in the description of this video and the promo code once again is TMTV. Thank you Underdog Fantasy. Lesson number four is I think Weston McKinney should get benched against Panama. He was poor against Colombia and then against Brazil where pretty much every single player from the US men's national team bounced back. Weston McKinney didn't bounce back. He didn't play well. And against Bolivia, he didn't play well once again. He looks like he's a little bit overweight, which has been an issue with Weston McKinney throughout his career for quite some time. Multiple players and coaches have talked about it, including one that I can remember is Italian legend Chiellini that played with him at Juventus. It just, he's just not looking good. He's looking slow, heavy, sluggish, not playing well. He has a few moments because he's very talented. He's one of our best players. And when in good shape, Weston McKinney is one of the best American soccer players of all time, actually. But right now, I think it's time to bench him. Just start Eunice Musa in his position, his role. I don't know, just my opinion. I don't want to bench Weston. He's a top three U.S. men's national team player and he was amazing for Juventus, especially in the start of the season. But he had a big drop off towards the end. It seems like he gained back some weight. And right now, he's not playing well. And the one thing I hope for is for Weston McKinney to shut my mouth. That, that's truly what I hope for. But as of now, I would probably bench him. Lesson number five is a bit of a tactical issue that I have with Burhalter. And understand, this is not me shitting on Burhalter. I haven't actually pooped on Burhalter all video long. But I would like to see Gio Reyna playing higher up the field. He is playing central, which is better than when Burhalter used to play him out wide as a right winger. However, I wanna see Gio high up the field, playing as a 10 or as an eight, an attacking playmaking eight, rather than a deep line playmaker. He's playing super deep. Sometimes he was even deeper than Tyler Adams in possession. Gio Reyna is a creative player and a goal scoring threat. Having him far away from the goal will take away assists and goals from the U.S. men's national team. So once again, play Gio as a 10. 
Essentially what I'm saying is if you rewatch the game, McKenney was playing as an eight and so was Gio. But McKenney was pushing high up the field in possession and Gio was dropping deep, deeper than Tyler Adams that played as a six. I think they should reverse that role. Whether it's McKenney or Musa that play there, it doesn't really matter or not play, plays there. It doesn't really matter. Gio and McKenney should reverse those roles and Gio can play high up the field and McKenney can drop deeper to help or Yunus Musa in the build out. I don't care, but push Gio high up the field. We'll create more shots and have a goal scoring threat up top. Lesson number six is I like how the US men's national team started this game. Now understand that we didn't really have a good game in my opinion. From minutes like 15 till 75, the US was kind of poor. And the only reason we weren't punished was because Bolivia doesn't have the quality to do so. But we started this game off in the first 10 minutes with a lot of intensity in pressing Bolivia and being goal dangerous. And this is what I want to say because we usually start slow and we get punched in the face early. But this team or this specific game, we started with a lot of intensity and we punched Bolivia in the face earlier in the game. By punch, I don't mean like literally punch. You get what I'm saying? Like if you punch someone in soccer, you get a red card. I don't have to explain that. What I mean by that is we hit first and we hit hard. It wasn't just pull a six goal. We had a few good goal scoring opportunities in the first 10 minutes. Then we slowed down for a good 60 and we kind of sucked for most of the game. That's a different discussion. But usually the US kind of starts poorly. This didn't happen this game. So hopefully we continue to do that throughout the tournament. Start with a lot of intensity, focused, wired, wide awake during the game. We just can't allow that drop off to be as harsh as it was throughout the game. I, I don't think we had that stability. I also think that when you start with that high intensity, there are higher odds of catching the opponent off guard. So that's just something else to say. Lesson number seven should be obvious and I'll continue to say it. I am a firm believer of talent over form. When the talent gap is reasonable though, obviously if the talent gap is tiny, then you kind of go with the player that's hot, the player that's in form. But generally speaking, when the talent gap is big, it's far more important than form. And I'm talking about Balogun specifically. He was not having a great performance and he had a terrible season for Monaco. But you know, the goal that he scored was tough. That was not an easy goal to score. And you know, sometimes talented players or overly talented players just need that one moment to change the game. And that goal was crucial. That's why I keep saying we should persist on Balogun and people kept calling him, calling me, I don't know, a Balogun apologist or just you're overhyping Balogun. He is our best nine. Unless there's someone on the bench that's very close to Balogun, he should 100% always be starting. He's a better player than Pepe, he's a better player than Sargent and you saw that throughout the game. By throughout the game, I mean in that one specific moment because he wasn't playing well but because he's so talented, sometimes all it takes is one moment. And, and that's why Balogun hasn't been great for the US men's national team, but he's been fairly productive, getting assists, getting goals, mainly because of how talented he is. So persist on Balogun. And then you may be wondering, hey, you said to bench McKenney. If it's based off talent and not form, why would we bench McKenney? And you don't wanna bench Balogun, for example, right? You're saying it's because of talent. Well, because Musa's talent compared to McKenney is much closer than Pepe to Balogun, in my opinion. Again, it could be subjective. I don't think it is. I think it's kind of obvious that Musa is right there with McKenney, just a little bit below because he's also younger. While Pepe to Balogun, I think there's quite a bit of a talent gap right there. All right, everyone, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to drop a like before you go. Thank you everyone that joined our Patreon. Again, link is in the description if you want to do so. And thank you very much Underdog Fantasy for sponsoring this video. Now, if you don't follow us, follow us on Twitter. The handle is Manager Tactical and make sure to follow us on Instagram. It's just Tactical Manager TV. I wanna thank you all very much for watching. We're gonna play Panama later this week. We will be doing a match preview for the Panama game and the live watch along, of course. I want to thank you all very much for watching and have a great day.